Hi ladies, welcome to Tipsy Tuesday. It's Beth from Be Styled. And I wasn't gonna come on today because it's a crazy day here. Our furnace is being replaced. It's literally 50 something degrees in my uh, downstairs right now. But I was like, you know what? I'm doing it. I'm, I've, I've done three weeks in a row. I'm on a roll. Um, so I'm here and I have a fun topic. One of my favorite topics is about breaking rules, breaking style rules in particular. Um, and I have some, some obvious ones and some maybe not so obvious ones and some that maybe you're not willing to break and some that maybe you've been breaking for years. But I have just four for you today. Number one is mixing your metals. Yes, we are mixing our metals, ladies. It's so much easier to not get hung up on, on you know, matching metals and buckles and you know, handbag uh, details and things like that. Um, I think about my mother, Mary, who you know we all love. Mary is not a metal mixer. Let me tell you, like to the extreme. Like I remember as a kid, like she'd even notice. I mean, she's going to sound neurotic, which she's not, but like, like, like a zipper you know, a zipper on a, on a jacket or something, even not, not even a prominent one, just a basic zipper. If it was silver, she's like, well, it was silver. And, you know, anyway, it's too hard. Life is too short to worry about those things. You don't need, you can mix your metals. The key I think though, is to be intentional about it, to really like go for it. Like if you're wearing a bunch of bangles, let's say you have a bunch of gold bangles on your wrist. Um, if you just put one silver one on and say, oh, here, I'm mixing my metals, that might not work. Make them half and half. Go half gold, half silver. Really mix it up or, or one third, two thirds. Um, be intentional about it. Um, and number two is along the same lines of matching or not matching. And that is, you know, we all, a lot of us our age grew up being taught that you needed to match your belt to your shoes. And if you carried a bag, then you needed to match that as well. So if you're wearing a brown belt, you're wearing brown shoes, brown bag, black belt, black shoes, black bag. No, no longer. Now, men, I would say, I mean, Bill Roy would definitely say that for a man, if you're wearing a brown belt, you're wearing brown shoes. You're not going to mix those for a man. But, but we don't have men here, hopefully. If you're here and you're a man, get out of here. But um, for us, mix it up and, and have fun with it. Like, I think, I think over in our, in our, it was in the winter group, um, probably the most popular outfit that people, it was so simple. I don't think I even made it up. I think Emily, Emily wore it and then I wore it and then a bunch of people. So simple, but so good. And it was white jeans, which is one of the standard rules that I talk about breaking all the time. This was in the winter, white jeans, a gray, it was like a gray cashmere V-neck sweater and a brown belt or even a leopard belt. Now the old Beth or definitely Mary would say, well, you're wearing gray, so you're not gonna wear leopard because leopard's brown and, and that has like gold, a gold buckle and gray, you should wear silver. No, gray sweater, leopard or brown belt, white jeans, and then like taupe booties. Or if you're wearing, um, if you're not wearing a leopard belt, then leopard, leopard flats. I wouldn't wear a leopard belt and a leopard flat at the same time. That's, that's, that's a rule that I think I just made up. Don't wear a leopard, don't wear more than one leopard unless you're being really intentional about it. Like you're saying, no, I am wearing my leopard flats and my leopard belt and I'm rocking it. Be confident in it. For me, I just, I, I have a one leopard rule, but that's my own rule. Okay. Um, <laughs> you don't have to follow it. Um, but my point is with the gray and the white and the brown is that's sort of unexpected back from back in the day. You know, we were kind of brought up to learn, at least I was, tell me if you agree that if you're wearing gray, then you're wearing black and silver. If you're wearing brown, you're wearing, you know, you know, beiges and that kind of thing. But no, mix it up. It looks so chic. And then, you know, throw on a pair of taupe booties, you know, with the brown belt. Yes, you can. It just looks cool. And then throw on mixed metal, a mixed metal jewelry deal, you know, gold and silver, maybe layers of gold and silver necklaces. Um, you can find them pre-mixed if, what is with the dog? You can find them already mixed or, you know, maybe you have a pair of earrings that have silver and gold in it. Have fun with that. Okay, so that's number two. Number three is, oh, I know, keeping all your spring, summer clothes separate from your winter clothes and never letting them mix. I'm a big believer in versatility. Um, now, some of you might live where it's, it's this, you know, 
hot all the time. And so that's going to be different. I live in a very, you know, I live in New England. So we've got cold, we've got hot, we've got it all. But I don't keep, I really try not to keep two separate wardrobes. I don't do a big switch out because I try not to buy very many things that are very um, seasoned. Season, I like seasonless. <laughs> You'll hear me talk about something being a year round seasonless item. I gravitate towards those because you get more use out of them, you know? Um, but, but let there be some crossover. Like don't pigeonhole things and say, well, I don't wear that in the winter or I don't wear that in the summer unless it's, you know, your down jacket or, you know, a really woolly sweater, but like a cashmere sweater. Let's say you have a lavender cashmere sweater, which you might think of as being a very springy color, but it's cashmere. So you think, well, wear it, wear it in the spring and summer, especially in New England at nighttime, I would wear, you know, jean shorts or white shorts and a, and a lavender cashmere sweater. If I were to go to the beach or be outside, totally don't pack those things up, keep them in your closet, keep them, you know, so that you can wear them. You know, again, there are certain things that don't cross over. You know, your your sundresses that are really, you know, linen, and you're not gonna wear those in the winter. I'm not saying that. You gotta be smart about it, but but try to, to gravitate towards things that are, are more seasonless in terms of dresses. I mean, there are a lot of dresses that I have that are, you know, a fabric that they're light enough to wear in the summer and, and fine to wear in the winter with, you know, a jacket over it and tights and boots. So look for those kind of things. You just get more bang for your buck, okay? But try not to pigeonhole seasons and, and clothes, okay? And that goes for white jeans. Yes, you can wear white jeans all year round. We've talked about that a hundred times. Number four, last but not least, is the rule that says, well, you can't repeat, I can't wear that because I just, wore, I, I, you know, I, not repeating outfits. And I blame, you know, social media. And I think we're, we're grown ups here for the most part, people who are watching me, that we're not caught up in the, you know, social media and posting. There's this whole thing about, you know, posting new stuff all the time, new, 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 and not repeating outfits. Duh, like that's just dumb. I mean, yes, if you have an outfit that you wear and you love it, Take a picture of it, keep it on your phone, and re-wear it over and over, within reason, obviously. Maybe mix, maybe change things up a little bit, but rinse and repeat. I say that all the time to my people, like when there's a great outfit, like you gotta keep, just wear that again. Like don't, don't make it a one hit wonder and say, well, I had this great outfit and now, you know, I can't wear it again or can't wear it again for a month or something silly. Don't put these, you know, made up time frames in your, you know, wear it again, wear it next week. Maybe make a quick change if you're seeing the same people, but God knows we're not. So wear it over and over again, especially like a great classic classic outfit that you love. Don't complicate things by saying, I can't wear it again. Wear it, okay? Uh, somebody likes my necklace. This is my everyday necklace. This is a Stella and Dot. It's called the Charm Keeper. I wear it every day, pretty much. Sometimes I'll add a, because I found out I'm a good silver person. My color guru says I'm silver. So I'll wear this and I'll add, you know, a silver chain to it. But I, I wear this a lot just because I love it. It has a reversible little doohickey that has CZs on one side and plain on the other. I never know what I, I don't really think about what our, what, our, what side is showing, but it's, it's versatile. Always, that's so important, ladies. Look for things that are versatile. Um, what else do I have for you? So, oh, oh I was talking about re-wearing things. Here's a little story, a little Beth story. Embarrassing, but true. When I was in high school, and I was not a fashionista, anyone who, and I don't think anyone here knew me in high school, I was not a fashionista by any stretch. Oh my gosh, so bad. But I was probably a little neurotic or a little, you know, I was a teenage girl. So I was doing the, you know, teenage girl in my head, like worrying about stupid things kind of thing. And I had a calendar. Let me know if any of you did this. I had a calendar and I wrote down what I wore. I would write it down and I would make sure, okay, I wore the green set. Da, 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 da. I can't wear that, wear that until I probably had, you know, I'm not a math person, but I probably had a, a, a formula in my head that said, well, I can't wear it on Tuesday because of this classes. I saw these people crazy town. But I did that and I, I re clearly remember doing that. I also matched my socks to my top back, back then. Crazy town. <laughs> but anyway, my point is don't do that. Rewear things. I will, a little plug for the Style System Planner because what that gives you is these three, three weeks, 21 days worth of looks that I've done the, I've done the 
the work for you. Maybe I, I probably use some of those skills that I learned in high school and I create a 21 day you know, outfit planner. So you don't have to think about what you're wearing. You're repeating things. It's a finite amount of clothes. It's clothes from your closet. You're repeating items, but you're creating different looks every day. And then after 21 days, you know what you can do? Start all over again from day one. And you do another, and maybe you change things up. Maybe like today, the formula was, um, you know, a pattern top and a neutral jacket and then, you know, neutral pants. I have on olive pants. Earlier I had on really cute like khaki pants, but it was just too cold. Um, so I changed into my olive pants. But anyway, you know, you could, you know, next, the next time this formula comes up, I could wear a, a, a floral top instead of the gingham. Um, I could wear a white jean jacket or a denim jean jacket. And then I could, you know, change the pants, whatever. So my point is just rotate things around from your closet and create new fresh looks from the same basic pieces and then accessorize and, and have fun and don't don't get hung up on rules and saying, you know, I get so many people who are like, well, Beth, can I do this? Can I wear this with that? Can I? And my answer is always, do you like it? And if the answer is, yeah, I like it, then the answer is yes, you can wear it, you know? Um, there, there it's, I will say it's good to have some guidelines and rules because that just makes you feel more confident. You know, if you feel like you're you're following some sort of guidelines and, and guide, guidelines versus rules, which is what I try to do with my groups, then you're just gonna feel more confident, especially if style doesn't come easily to you, which it doesn't to most of us. It, it really never did to me either. And I don't really consider myself stylish per se, but I think I've kind of figured out what works for me and I've tried in my very overcomplicated brain <laughs> to under to uncomplicate it by making by saying let's just take a step back and simplify things um, so that you're not buying so much stuff um, you know you don't get into the habit of seeing the the outfit on Instagram the O O T D outfit of the day the adorable blogger with a great outfit and feeling like you have to copy it grab elements from it. Grab elements from your closet. It doesn't have to be exact. And I see women in my groups doing it all the time in such genius ways. Like, really, you know, they're, they're, a lot of us were wearing this, this gingham shirt. This is from Amazon, Amazon Good Threads, which is a great, if, you know, a lot of people don't like Amazon. I'm not a huge fan. Sorry, Jeff Bezos. But um, I've found some great Amazon brands, and Good Threads is one of them. This is like J. Crew quality, hands down. It is great quality. Look, it, and it comes with a tie, so I'm not messing with the half tuck and all that. It just, for me, it's the right length. And, you know, I just like the gingham. It's, it's navy, but it's some, one navy I tried looked like black. This is like a real navy blue. Um, what was my point going on in the shirt? Anyway, oh, but some women are like, Beth, I'm not wearing a gingham shirt. I feel like I'm wearing a picnic blanket or a, or a tablecloth, or I just feel like, you know, I'm on hee-haw. <laughs> so I'm like, don't force it. If, if just because I'm wearing a gingham shirt and some other people are wearing a gingham shirt or you see the J. Crew catalog features a gingham, gingham shirt, and I don't know if it does, but if you're like, oh, that's just not me, don't force it. Maybe you're more of a floral. Maybe you're more of, a, a, of an animal print. Maybe, but don't, don't force these looks to, in an in in attempt to um, copy them. I guess that's my number one rule is don't force things, but have fun with things. Okay, um, and let's see. How's sizing on the Amazon shirt? It is true to size. I'm wearing a small, I'll take off my favorite Ponty blazer, which you hear me talk about all the time. This is my peach Ponty blazer. Oh, the heat's finally coming back on. So it is, um, here's a small. You know, I am a small chested girl, but sometimes I get an extra small in shirts, not usually because I don't like things to be tight, but um, this is a small. And it's it's cute, you know? And, it, and Good Threads is a good brand. Amazon Essentials, Good Threads, Lark and Row. Those are my three that come to mind as good, dependable Amazon brands. Some of them you, you are hit or miss, you know? Those are good. And I think what, what Jeff Bezos has figured out how to do is he's basically just don't quote me, I don't know what I'm talking about, but I think he's, you know, he's going to these retailers, to these popular, very high quality 
retailers and just copying it. He is copying the material, the cut, the styles, and doing that. And it's sad because, it, but it is what it is. Um, I'm saying hello to all you wonderful people. Um, but I want, I wanted. To, okay, so those are the those are the rules I'm saying to break. People always ask me about rules, like what rules should you not break? And I mentioned my whole one leopard. Um, another one, I think an overall, just not rule, but a concept to keep in mind when you're making an outfit is loose with, like loose with, um, with slim and slim with loose or loose with tight and tight with loose. You know what I mean? Don't, you're, you, you don't want to have a very loose and flowy top with a loose and flowy bottom. And by that, I mean, even like wide leg, you know, pants, you're not going to pair that with a loose, longer top. You're going to want to have your top be more slim fitting. And the reverse is true. If you're wearing very slim pants, whether they're skinny jeans or leggings or jeggings, then you want your top. It doesn't have to be a tunic. It doesn't have to be a big oversized, but it, you want it to have some, some length and some, some volume on top. So volume on top, slimmer on the bottom, slimmer on top. You know what I mean. Again, I, <laughs> you know what I mean. It's that proportion. You don't want to have both. Um, you don't want really tight on top and tight on bottom. I don't think, I don't think any of us are at risk of doing that. We are at risk of having, of being oversized all over. That's probably the biggest mistake I see women wear is, is buying clothes that are too big. Um, and it's, it's, it comes from up here. It really does. Um, and from not wanting to show your body and by covering up your body with material, you're not doing yourself any favors. You want things to, to follow your curves. You don't need them to be tight and hugging, but you want them to follow your curves. Um, boy, I am all over the map here. Um, and I, thanks for addressing the wide leg pant and, and the top. Yes. Like with a wide, with a wide leg pant, which, you know, love them or hate them. People get very opinionated about, especially like wide leg cropped pants, which I love. Like, and you know, I know I'm on, I'm not that tall, but I'm tall. Um, and people will say, well, I, I can't, I've got short legs. I can't wear wide leg pants. Don't say can't, can't, can't. There are ways to wear just about everything but you just need to find the right pair for you. And with wide leg pants, if it has some drape, it's not like big, you know, crunchy, thick denim wide leg pants that are just gonna be wide on anyone. Um, if they're like a, a, you know, a drapier pant in like a, a light ponty material, yes, you can wear them. Yes, you can wear them. And I believe that, especially this time of year, I think they look better and look more modern if they're cropped. Some, I know some people say no, they, you want them to be the full length all the way, you know, to the, to your shoe, like long, which is a great look too. Wear a heel. You have to wear a heel when you do that. But the beauty of it being slightly cropped is you can wear any shoe, you know, a little heel is going to look better, but, um, it's just, it's, it's modern looking like it or not. If, and if you don't like it, d then don't wear it. But, um, people get very, very, upset about wide leg cropped pants. But yes, if you're petite, you can wear them. Yes, if you're petite, they can look great. The key, here's a couple keys. You want the material to be flowy and not overwhelming of your, of your frame. And the length, you do not want, here's a rule, <laughs> especially with midi dresses and cropped pants um, and, and the like. The dogs are gonna bark, I'm warning you. You don't want the, the hem of the pant or the dress to, hit at the widest part of your calf, like where your calf, everyone's calf, you know, goes out, you know, midway through your bottom of your leg. You don't want, there's a, so you want it to hit either below where your calf widens or up, above, but not right at the widest part. Okay. That's that horizontal line at the widest part. You don't want that. So a wide leg pant that hits a couple inches above your ankle, which is going to be the slimmest part of your calf, is fantastic. Pair it with a neutral shoe that's kind of the color of your, your skin, especially if you're petite, that just elongates. If you throw a black shoe on, it's going to, it's going to shorten your legs. But a, a, it could be a flat. It could be, especially if it's kind of slightly pointy toe and it's the color of your skin, it's going to elongate. And if the pants have some movement and some drape, and then your top is 
you know, like this, like short, shorter. You know, this is a top that's gonna hit, that's hitting right at my waist. So, you know, I could wear this with, with wider bottoms, but I'm not gonna wear a tunic with, with the short, cropped, wide pants. That's just, that's just not gonna work. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm sorry that I am so disjointed today. I blame it on the fact that I have no heat. Here's a quick story. Went, did a little workout this morning on the treadmill, went to take a shower and turned on the water and it was ice, like not just cold, it was ice, 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 ice. Turns out in the process of working with the heater down here, they turned off the water heater. We had no cold, we had no hot water. So granted, needless to say, I did not take a shower. I did use dry shampoo and I did my trick where I wash my bangs haven't had my hair, I haven't washed my hair since last Wednesday when Holly did my hair, so it's been almost a week, but I just washed my bangs in the freezing cold sink water. And um, there's a trick. There's a trick for when, for when you don't wanna wash your hair. Just wash your bangs, just wash, even if you don't have bangs, like just wash the front section of your hair. Take an inch or so and pull it down, wash that hair, blow dry it, leave the rest alone, throw some dry shampoo in, and you just bought yourself another day without needing a shower or a hair wash. <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Um, let's see, Debbie, I bought a pair of high-waisted, wide-leg crops from Target. Can't wait to try them. She's 5'1". Exactly. I Take a picture of them. I bet they're going to be fabulous on you. It's all about the shoe. I have a, a blog post that I wrote last spring, I think, about wide-leg pants this time of year. Take, take a picture, Debbie, show us. It's all about the shoe and, and how, you, how you style it, keeping the top shorter and fitted, and letting them, you know, but it's a great way to to you know, especially if you're if you're a if you're a pear shape figure or an hourglass where you can highlight your waist, and and the the pants will just flow over your hips and your tush, okay. Um, but like I said, they're not for everyone. Some people just some people feel very strongly against that look. But I have a feeling it's here to stay. It's been here for a while, and it is probably here to stay which is wider leg pants in general. So um, some of, some people love it, so that's great. You know, palazzo kind of pants, um, and they come, you can get those in the full length too. I actually saw some in Old Navy yesterday. Um, full length, kind of linen, drawstring waist, comfortable, especially for you warm weather people, especially if you don't like to wear shorts. They're a great alternative to shorts. Um, let's see, great hair tip, see? It's Tipsy Tuesday. What else do I have for you ladies? I don't think I have anything else, but I'm open to any questions. If anyone has any questions about any any rules that you've heard, what are the rules? Tell me what your favorite rules are to break. I know I have a lot of rule followers. I'm a, I'm a lifelong rule follower, I mean, for the most part. Um, the older I get, the less I am, but... Um, I love breaking rules when it comes to clothing because who cares, you know? Try it, try it, have fun. There's it's just, it's just an easy way to have fun in your day is with this whole clothing thing. It's not that, not that serious. Um, the Old Navy pants, yeah, they're great. Um, what else did I see at Old Navy yesterday? I was, I had to make a stop and I ran in there and, oh, you know what else I saw there that you, people might like? They had a chambray shirt dress that was really cute. It was just a ba very, you know, simple. When you're going into a store like that, inexpensive, quality is, yeah, you want to go simple, simple, class, you know, simple. So this was just a chambray shirt dress that came to, it's probably would probably come just above my knee. And yes, you can wear things above your knee after you're 40, ladies. Yes, you can, unless you don't want to, and then you don't have to, but yes, you can. Um, and, it, and it just was just a shift dress. It didn't, you could wear it, you could belt it if you wanted to, didn't need to. It looked great with a pair of like sandals, or you could wear it with a jacket over it or a cardigan even. Um, and it would work in the fall, it would work in the summer, you could roll the sleeves, it's not gonna stick to your body anywhere. Um, that's just something that popped into my mind that I saw there. They had a, a couple pretty floral tops, these nice like split neck, they call it a poet, poet shirt blouse in some neat florals. Florals are big. Here's a little trick on florals. I feel like 
going with, you're gonna see tighter florals, not big. You don't want big, big, colorful florals. Like by colorful, meaning like multiple different colors in a big floral. That, sorry, I think is aging. It's, it's aging. Whereas a smaller floral in one or two, the ones I'm thinking of, were like sh just all one sh different shades of a pink. It was pinks and salmons with cream in like tight floral. Um, and then the same one came in like a white background with a little navy and black maybe. So subtle, but cool. Um, so that's a trick with florals is and with dresses too. Keep the, keep the patterns tight um, and the colors limited. Color, bright colors are great, but not a million different bright colors. That's my, again, my opinion, only my opinion. Um, it is getting so cold. Look at my blanket, wanna see some pattern mixing? I've been walking around and I was like, oh, I kinda like the way this looks. This, this is my Amazon, sorry, Amazon, not a blanket that I got. I think Cassie from High Sugar Plum promotes, loves this blanket and it's a, it's a winner. But look, I was walking around this and I was like, oh, look, I've got gingham and leopard in my navy and I'm pattern mixing. <laughs> ah, it's cold. It's getting, it's coming back on, but man, it's, in my house, it's probably 50, right now it's 50 degrees in my house. Thank goodness upstairs it's working where Mary is because that would not go over well. Let's see if anyone else has any questions. Um, anyone have any other rules? How about wearing navy with black? Yes, you can wear navy with black. That can be a very chic look as long as it's intentional, as long as it's not like, oh, I thought I was wearing black shoes, but I'm wearing navy shoes, you know, intentionally wear, you know, like a navy sweater and black pants and black flats and some silver jewelry and own it and say, yeah, I'm wearing navy and black and I know it and I like it. You can do that, brown and black. Yes, chocolate brown and black, absolutely. Um, any other rules, anything? Rules, what other rules do I hear people say? I can't, they say, I can't do that because, you know, a lot of it is, uh, you know, age. I can't do that because I'm over 40 or over 50 or whatever. No, 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 no. There are really no, there are no rules. Good style has no age, right? And at the end of the day, if you like it, you wear it. That's my only rule. Okay? That's all I have for you today. Sorry for the rambling. Next week I'll be more prepared. Um, but I did it. I got dressed today in my sub-zero temperature house. And I'm even wearing like a, a shirt. Like I'm not even wearing, like I, I got dressed. I swear it's because of, it's because of I have my group running. <laughs> and you know, it's like, gotta do it. So anyway, if it's not too late to join, quick plug, all season long, you can join. It doesn't have an, a start and stop date. You can join anytime. And if you're not into the groups thing, if you're not in, into posting, you don't even have to, you don't have to join the group if you don't want to. You definitely don't have to post. You can just take the planner, get your 21 days of outfits, put it on your phone, hang it in your closet, do whatever you want and know what you're wearing every day from your closet, picking things from your closet and, and combining them easily. That's what it's all about, okay? So thanks for joining. Have a great day. I got dressed, you get dressed. If you haven't already, it's time. Go do it. Put on something cute. Put on something that makes you feel good and have a great day. Bye for now.